In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a custom edit text where we can have a floating hint and some type of an autocomplete uh, function for when the user types something, we give him something to, to choose from in the list while he's typing. So in order to do this, you need to go to your Gradle scripts first and go into build.gradle. If you go to your build.gradle file, right at the bottom, you need to add this, add this compile statement there. So it's going to be compile com.android.support and note this, the colon there, design, and the colon again. Now, the version that you need to specify here depends on your, your compile SDK version. So at this stage, mine is 25. So I will go with 25 there. So if you just type 25, uh, you can see that if you hover over it, there's they say there's a newer version available on mine. That's 25.1.1. So then you can just go and add your .1.1 there or whatever your specific version there. And then uh, just click on sync now and it will it will sync your project compiling in the support or the design support library so that we can actually do what we need to do in this example. So if it's done running, mine is done running at the bottom, I will go to the layout now. And in the layout, I'm going to change the relative layout there to a linear layout. And I'm going to remove the padding and then just add Android orientation of vertical. And then I'm going to remove the text view. So we'll come back to this layout now, but that's just uh, removing some things that we normally do in getting our linear layout complete. Okay, so the first thing I need to do now is to go into my resources folder, go into the values and go into the styles XML. So this styles XML, we're going to create a new style that we're going to use with the edit text. So for the styles name, you can name this anything you like. Let's just call it uh, floating, floating hint uh, style, floating hint style. And then for the parent, it should be at Android. And then you're going to use the at style property there. So it's going to be or the style property. So it's going to be style. And I think if you start typing, let's just try typing text appearance. You'll, you'll see it. You can select it there from the list. So there's the text appearance. That's the style that we want. So the parent for this is Android style text appearance. And we are calling it floating hint style. And we're going to just add one item there. So we're going to say item. Then we're going to search for the text color property there. So it's the Android text color property. And uh, you can just close it down. And then we want to go with the color accent. And remember, this color accent is now a part of your colors XML. So in your colors XML, there's your color accent. So if you want to change the color, you can change the colors here. Uh, so in the styles XML, we've called it floating hint style. And we've set a specific color for the text appearance. So now you can save and let's go to the main activity now. And we're going to add our own custom uh, view here. So we're going to call this view Android support. Well, just let's just search for text input layout. So there you can see when you start typing text input layout, you'll get to android.support.design.widget.text input layout. For the width, we're going to say match the parent. And for the height, we're going to say wrap the content. So if you go down, this is basically what we have now. And for this, we only need another few properties there. So if you go into the main layout and you're going to your text input layout there now, on the right hand side with the properties, let's just give it an ID. So I'm going to call this floating underscore hint and let's call this first name, first name, something like that. Floating hint, first name. If I go to view all properties now and we go to going down to hint text appearance, so there's the hint text appearance and you're going to go down and search for what you've called your your specific style there. So we called it floating floating hint style. So if we go down now to the text tab at the bottom, our text input layout is now set up correctly. We've got the hint text appearance, we've got the ID, we've got the layout width and height and that's the all, only things you need. So the next step would be you will get some rendering problems there. So you can just cancel the rendering problems. That's not a problem. 
and we're going to drag in an edit text and I'm going to drag in a plain one. So I'm going to drag in plain text into the floating hint first name, which is our text input layout. If I drop it and you go down, you can see it's inside of my text input layout tag. So if it's not, just cut it and paste it inside. So for this one, I'm not going to change a lot just to, to see how it uh, appears. So I'm going to just quickly remove the text property there for this um, edit text of ours. So I'm going to remove the text property there. Now let me just go back, click on it, remove the text property. And then let's go down to the hint property. And you know you must not type anything here, but you should use the strings XML. But just for this example, uh, let's just type it here. So we're going to say enter your first name. Enter your first name. And then that would be for the edit text. That would be his, um, his int. Okay, so for the edit text then, you can see for the width, wrap the content. Let's make the width uh, match the parent. And then it will look like that. And we can go down and set the gravity property. Set the gravity property to be center horizontal. And then it should look like this. Okay, so there's enter your first name. That's the edit text. And now we need the hint there. That's one thing we need in order for this floating hint to work. Without a hint, you cannot do a floating hint. So just to see this in working action, I'm going to create two of them. So I'm going to copy that one and just paste it here and then for the edit text let's call that one hint first name and for this text input layout let's call this one last name so the id is different and for this edit text this will be let's call it et first name and for this one we're going to call it et last name okay so now we've got two different or yeah, two different edit texts. This one will show enter your last name. And if we go to design, close the rendering problems, you can see that it shows correctly. So now if we run this quickly. Okay, so here you can see the app in action. If I click on an edit text, you can see it floats upwards the, uh, the hint. So if I click on the hint, it floats upwards and now I can start typing. Uh, there also it floats upwards and then I can start typing, let's say, whatever. So, very nice animation there where your hint just floats upward. And that's that's what we did now for this. And you can see that the color is the same color as the accent color that you've got underneath your edit text. So that accent color there and the accent color there will then be the same. So you can go and change the colors in your styles XML in that text color there. But if you're, using, if you're using accent, you're using the exact same color as the underline. So that's it for the hint part. So let's say we want to get and we want to start typing something. Let's say a few names there. And if you start typing your name, it should uh, give you some other options, options to choose from. So it's like an autocomplete type of function that we can add to the edit text. So let's see how we can do that. So in order to do the autocomplete, uh, let's just go to the activity main XML into the text part and the only thing we need to change in the layout. So let's say I'm going to only do the, the first one. So the edit text has got a subclass called autocomplete text view. So make that edit text an autocomplete text view. Okay, so if you're done with that, let's go to the main activity and just set them up and coding quickly. So in the main activity, we have that autocomplete, not auto complete text view, and we called it, let me just go back, I called it ET first name. So I'm going to say ET first name, and then let's set them up in coding. ET first name, autocomplete text view, find the view by its ID, r.id. And this one is ET first name. Set it up in coding, and now we can do a few other things to, to quickly set this up. The first thing will be the array, I'm going to call it names, that you're going to use in order to show uh, the autocomplete. 
So let's let's add a few names here. So I'm gonna go with uh, let's say the first one James, and the second one will be something like John, and maybe the third one. I'm just gonna use J's here because remember this could now come from your database or wherever where you can have people from A's and B's and C's and so forth. So let's just add a few more. Let's say Janine, and we'll have uh, a Jennifer, and we'll have uh, Jack. And let's add another one there, Johnny. Okay, so let's say that is now your, your array of the elements that you want to have shown in your edit text. If the user starts typing something there, it should give him a list of names, depending on what he types. So if you're going to start with the J there, then I'm going to show him all of these J's. Okay, so for this, we need an array adapter. And an array adapter helps us to basically add a, an array to a list of items or as a list of items. So this array adapter will be of type string and then I'm going to call it adapter equals new array adapter also of type string. And then the first argument there, let me just go to a new line there. The first argument there must be the context. So the context you can just pass in this or you can say main activity dot this. And then the second argument is your layout file. So we can go with the Android layout files. So we're going to say android.r.layout.simple um, drop down item line, one line. That should, one should be fine. Now this you'll see is not the normal r.layout. It is from the Android libraries r.layout. So it's not your own application's r.layout file, this one. So this is a a pre-made type of layout that we're using to show the information and we'll change it later on. The last argument will then be your array that you need to pass in. Okay, so now on that edit text of ours, et first name, we're going to set what we call a threshold. And this means that after one character that the user typed, we will start showing uh, the autocomplete function. So if you want to only show the autocomplete after the third character that the user typed, then you will make that one a three. So we'll keep it at one for now. And then to that ET first name, we're going to set the adapter. And that adapter is the one that we just created there. The one with the three arguments, the context, the layout for the items, and then your array of names. So let's quickly see this thing in action. If we run it now. See if it refreshes. There we go. Right. So let's start typing an A there and you can see nothing happen like Adam or whatever. But if I start typing a J, you can see it gives me a list of names there. If I st you can see there's a J A for James. So if I say J A, I'll have James and Jack. So you can see the threshold there is one, which means that after the very first character, I will get a list and you can scroll the list as well. So I can scroll to my name, just select it, and it's, it's placed there. So this is a nice way of giving the user some autocomplete function there. So let's say you want to add your own layout there. So if you want to do your own layout for the, the choices that the user will get, you're going to go into the layout folder, and you're going to right-click and say new layout resource file. So it's going to be new layout resource file, and you're going to give it a name. Uh, let me just do that again. So you're going to go to File and New. You won't see this in my application now, but you're going to go to File, New, and then Layout Resource File. Or you can go and right-click on your Layout folder, say New, and then at the top, Layout Resource File. And I'm going to call this one, uh, let's just say something like Custom Design. And this is for my edit text or for, let's call it Autocomplete. It's custom design autocomplete. Say OK. And there's your layout. So you'll see you've got a new file under resources layout. Call that one. And then uh, if you look at your layout, it looks like this. And the only thing I'm going to do there is to drag in a text view. Now on this text view, let's uh, set the uh, properties. Uh, set the gravity property quickly. And we set the gravity to be center horizontal so you can see on the phone 
when I start typing there, it's on the left hand side. So if you want to have it in the center, you can just center it. And then let's go down and make the text style bold and make the text size an 18. And maybe set the text color also to that same accent color. And now it looks like this. Okay, so if I if I go to my main activity, or well, before we go to the main activity, let's just go to the text tab. A very important here, you need to have this XML is Android part there. I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to paste it as part of the text view. So this XML in is Android helps us to have these Android uh, text colors, styles, and so forth. So without that, it will give us an error there. And then I want you to remove the whole layout. So you're going to remove the linear layout with all of its tags so that you just end up with a simple text view. Okay, so now you can save and let's go to the main activity. And now we're going to replace this thing there. So it's going to be R, our own R dot layout dot, and we called it custom design autocomplete. So if I run this app now, let's see if it refreshes now. Okay, so the app is running now. So if I start typing a J now, you can see that the list is now in the middle and it is the, the same color accent. So if I go back now and let's say we want to add some space there, how you do that is to go to your, uh, your custom design, click on that text view, and then just go to the padding and let's add padding there of 15. So you'll see I don't go to the left or right, I add padding everywhere. So it's on the left, right, bottom, everywhere. And let's run that again. If we run that again, you'll get a bit more padding there between the elements. So this is how you do the custom design for an edit text that gets you a floating hint as well as some autocomplete options.